Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry it's been a bit tricky finding parking spaces this morning. And um, on your tables, you should have several things. Um, first of all, a donkey quiz to get you talking and thinking about Palm Sunday in a, in a slightly unusual way. So have a chat amongst yourselves as you drink your coffee. There should be some hot cross buns. There's also a spinner to make um, if you want to, to create that to use later during Jill's worship. Um, but other than that, yeah, carry on. Finish your quiz. The answers are hidden in an envelope. When you've answered them all, perhaps somebody on your, leader could, on your table could be the answer quiz leader and tell you how well you did. But carry on. Right, everybody, we are going to sing our welcome to one another now. So you can do it from your tables, but if you are able to stand, we, there are some signs that come with this song. It's welcome everybody. It's good to see you here. Claire knows it, so that's lovely, and I'm sure many of you do. But this is our opening song to our welcoming one another. We're gathering in God's presence. So let's stand and welcome everybody. We'll sing the chorus first and then the verse, first verse. Strong. As we 
and welcome everybody. And a warm welcome to those who are joining us online as well. So before we move on in this, I want to welcome you to our Palm Sunday Church Family Service. It's the first event in our Easter program. So just some notices to draw your attention to. I don't think I've brought notices to this number for many weeks, so it's lovely to see you. Please let me know if you're joining us for the um, international bring and share meal on Thursday, um, ideally by Wednesday. There is a link in the MailChimp. And please let Steve know if you're coming to the Easter Sunday breakfast at his home. Um, that is a deadline of Wednesday, otherwise you may not have anything to eat. <laughs> Um, and then we've got, obviously, our Easter Sunday worship together next Sunday. Um, there's an Easter choir um, practice after today's service, just to draw your attention to that. And in the MailChimp, you will see that there's an event this evening in Brackley. And if anybody is going to that, there's somebody who would appreciate a lift. Can I just look around? Is anybody planning to go to the event this evening in Brackley and is able to offer a lift? I might do, but I haven't decided yet. <laughs> okay. So I'll have a word with you afterwards yeah. and link you up with the person who'd like to go. Thank you, B. Thanks for that. Um, I think that is all our notices. So we're just going to be quiet now in God's presence. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let's say it together. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are our God and we will praise you. Let us give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his faithful love endures forever. We stand now to welcome our King of Kings. Welcome, King of Kings. online to sing Hosanna praise is rising and uh, the children online are going to be signing and so if you're able to join with them we we'll probably have to do this sitting down so that we can see or do oh, you yeah. think we're all right no, we can go and sit down 
just looking to the back. Um, Thanks, Jill. Um, now, it's Palm Sunday today. On September the 8th, in 2022, Prince Charles became King Charles. Now, he had known that he was going to become king for a very long time. So he had lots of time to think about the kind of king that he wanted to be, about what his reign was going to look like. But I wonder if you suddenly found out that you were going to become king or queen, what kind of king or queen would you like to be? And I'm not talking about the kind of puppet king or queen that, you know, does what somebody else tells them. But if you were king and had the power and the authority to snap your fingers and whatever you said went, what would you do? Perhaps you'd like to turn to the others on your table and have a think about that. Come up with some excellent ideas on what you'd like to change, what you'd like to implement, or just what you'd like to be as king or queen. And I'll give you a couple of moments to talk about that. Right, now you've had a, a few moments to think about it. I wonder if uh, somebody would like to come and be our king and queen. Leo, you look particularly regal. King Leo is um, temporarily indisposed, so we're going to have Queen Jo instead. Jo, would you like to take your place on our throne? Oh, oh help us, safety. <laughs> we did risk assess before, I'd like to point out. Leo was a little smaller. Jo, you don't look very regal. Let's put a crown on you. Oh, oh much better. Hang on a second. I think you need a, a cloak. Oh, yes. Oh. oh, oh, Joe, you look practically regal now. Let me serve you. Perhaps you'd like a grape, madam. Oh, yes, exactly. Don't choke. Risk assess. Joe, whilst you're perusing, chewing that grape, if you were king or queen, or in fact, if Leo was king or queen, uh, is there anything you'd like to change at school or at work? So I spoke to King Leo, and King Leo says that there should be no work at school and all play. <laughs> now, some of the teachers might like that idea. So, interesting. School might look quite different then if King Leo was on the throne. Um, Joe, is there anything you'd like to change in the world, or perhaps Leo would like to change in our country? I think that King Leo would like the whole world to look like Minecraft. <laughs> well, well, that's quite unique. You can expect a very different country and world if King Leo is on the throne. I was going to ask if any of your answers were similar. Um, I'm hazarding a guess they might not have been. Joe, is there anything else that you or King Leo would like to do as king? I think King Leo would like everybody to be in the world to be happy. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? 
we'd like that kind of king on the throne. Well, Joe, you have been amazing stand-in queen. Um, would, you, would you like to very carefully descend from your throne? I'll leave your crown there for later. Um, well, that was interesting, wasn't it? Who knew what the world could be? 2,000 years ago, the Jewish people were expecting a king or a queen. A new king, rather. They didn't know exactly what kind of king was going to come, but they had an idea in each of their minds about what it, this king was going to be like. And then Jesus came onto the scene and he started teaching and proclaiming himself as the Messiah. And on that first Palm Sunday, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey and the people got very excited because this was one of the signs that they had been anticipating. They'd been anticipating God's Messiah to come as king and to ride into Jerusalem on a donkey. So let's hear the story of that first Palm Sunday now. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. The next day, the crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard, heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. So our passage tells us that the people were expecting a king. And when Jesus came into Jerusalem, they thought he had arrived. So they became out, they lined the streets, they waved palm branches. And our passage starts by telling us something really important. It tells us that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. And that might not feel such a significant detail for us, but for them it was really, really important. Because Jerusalem was and still is the capital, the central city of Judaism. It's where all the powerful Jewish leaders were. And so Jesus' claim to be king um, could be shrugged off or could be ignored, seen as unimportant when he was out in the villages or the towns or the countryside. But when he came into Jerusalem, people had to take notice Coming into Jerusalem was a bold and a dangerous thing for Jesus to do. The disciples knew it, the people knew it, and Jesus knew it too. And it was even bolder because Jesus knew that he was coming into Jerusalem to die. But the crowds who greeted Jesus had a different idea. For three years, they'd been um, listening to Jesus teaching, performing miracles, talking about the kingdom of God. And now, when they saw him coming into Jerusalem, riding on this donkey, they thought that all their expectations were being met. They were hoping for a king who was going to be a mighty warrior, a king who was going to come in and destroy the Roman Empire, overthrow everything that was going on at the time and would establish the Jews as rulers of God's world. They thought Jesus was coming to take over. And so they took their palm branches and they went out to meet him, waving them in the air and shouting, Hosanna, 
Hosanna, which means save us. And the other Gospels tell us that Jesus didn't, the people didn't just wave branches, but they threw their cloaks, a bit like Joe's royal cloak here, on the ground in front of the donkey so that the donkey walked over them as a sign of respect and honor. The people were expecting a king. Their scriptures had predicted that this new king would come riding on a donkey. And yet, the people had built up such a picture in their minds of what they expected this king to be like, that they hadn't thought about what kind of king rides on a donkey. They wanted a warrior, but really, what kind of warrior rides a donkey? Surely someone who's come to fight a battle, to impose themselves on the people around them, rides a huge stallion, a giant steed that sets them head and shoulders above everybody else. But a donkey certainly isn't that. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about donkeys on your quizzes this morning. (laughs) Um, We've learned, haven't we, that donkeys are gentle and kind and really quite intelligent They're hard-working. They think and they make decisions about their safety before they choose to act. And they certainly don't... um, Well, they certainly don't look an imposing beast as they ride into town, do they? They're not what you'd expect a king to ride. And so, I think that when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on that donkey... He was confronting the expectations of the people. He was saying, you're expecting a king, and yes, here I am, but I'm not going to be the kind of king that you expect at all. And you'd have realized that if you'd thought a little bit more about the kind of king that rides on a donkey. You don't have to fight your way to the throne. I'm not here to destroy the Roman Empire. I'm not going to wage war. No, I come on a humble beast because I am a humble king. I'm going to take away the weapons of the war and I'm going to proclaim peace with my reign. But we have to be careful, don't we, that we don't mistake humility and gentleness for weakness because not only is Jesus an unexpectedly humble king, but he's also courageous. Jesus knew that when he rode into Jerusalem so publicly on a donkey, he was putting his own life at risk because the religious authorities were threatened by him. They were already planning to kill him. And the Romans didn't take kindly to anybody else claiming to be king. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey because that's what his father had said he was going to do. But he rode into a donkey to show the kind of king that he was going to be. Not a mighty warrior, not someone to bring a temporary solution to their situation, but someone who was going to do something much more significant, something much longer lasting. He came to serve as a humble and a courageous king by conquering death itself. And he did this by dying for us. This unexpected king riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, humble, obedient, courageous, saving his people, not with a horse or a chariot or a sword, but on a cross. And we're going to pick up the idea, that picture of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey with a song. And I think it's going to come on the video, is that right? If you've got those, yes, I can see two or three around them. Do wave them and uh, join in. This is one that's going to come up. There's some lovely pictures. Like children Stories have of the Bible. Jesus and washes and his disciples' feet. Cloaks and branches. Lovely images there. So the events of Easter week didn't unfurl quite the way that people expected when they welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem. And what we expect to see doesn't always happen. And so to demonstrate that, I thought we'd do a little experiment together this morning. Um, So on your tables, you'll need to collect, um, there should be some little blue pots, um, and inside there there's some black pens and some little tiny footprints. 
and um, some water. And the question we're going to ask is, what colour is black? Now, of course, that sounds quite a silly question because we all know what colour black is. It's black, isn't it? Um, it's no colour at all. Well, let's see. So if you take your, take your paper footprint, have you each got one? It should be inside the blue cups on the middle of your table. Share them around. There are a few more extra if anybody needs an extra one. And then you'll need a blue cup each as well. Right, has everybody got a blue cup? Oops. A little tiny footprint. Okay, and then the next thing you need to do is take your footprint and on the heel of your footprint, about one centimeter up, draw a big black dot. got three more black pens if anybody needs one. And then when you've drawn your giant black dot, put a tiny bit of water into the bottom of your cup, up to the ridge, so about, I don't know, half, um, half a centimetre, five mil. There should be some water in a bottle on your table. Not too much. You want it to sit underneath your dot, really. And then when you've got, has everybody got water in their little cups? Okay, oh, Jill's demonstrating. She's ready poised. Okay, so now you're going to pop your little footprint inside your cup, stand it up against one side, don't need to do anything else, just rest it. Please don't put your whole foot in there. Uh, just rest it in there. And then you're going to leave it there. And you should see, I hope, that the water is beginning to be sucked up by the paper. And then you can just leave it. for a moment. And we're going to come back to them a little bit later as we think about some other feet. Because as Easter week went on, or as that Holy Week went on, Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem wasn't the only thing that was a bit unexpected. Neither was it the only thing that showed the kind of king he was going to be. And we're going to hear the next part of the story from John chapter 13 um, as we watch a little video in a second. And as they're getting that ready, I just wonder, is there anybody that's got some family news this morning to share? Oh, Claire's got some family news. <laughs> So thank you for all your prayers for Claire as she went on her holiday. She um, had a very exciting time and has got lots of photos. If you'd like to look at them afterwards, she'd be very happy to show you. Yeah. Oh, Betty, happy birthday. Anybody else got a birthday or something to celebrate? Oh, Lucy, I think this looks very exciting. Can I take it to the front? Would you want to come and bring it? I got this. So it's a certificate of achievement for employability skills. Wow. And you got it at prize giving spring 2024. Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. And she's got her new badge so she can uh, fully identify with Dermot College even when she's not there. Yeah, it means back. You are back. Well yeah. and truly back. It's good to have you back. Is there any other family news? 
Is our video ready? Brilliant. Okay, let's have a little look inside your cups. I hope something's happening. In Jesus' day, oh, I'm not sure that what I had expected to happen is happening everywhere, but um, we'll see in a minute. In Jesus' day, people wore sandals and their feet got really dirty. They also reclined at low tables to eat, so they were very close to other people's dirty, smelly feet. And normally before a meal, a servant would wash everybody's feet, but no one had done this in our meal. So when Jesus and his disciples came to eat, They have very dirty, smelly feet. But instead of leaving them unwashed or finding a servant to go and do it for them, Jesus, King Jesus, took off his robe. He wrapped a towel around his waist, poured some water into a bowl, and then he started washing his disciples' feet. Can you imagine King Charles doing that before a state dinner? Can you imagine King Leo doing that? before lunch at home. If riding on a donkey was an unexpected thing, washing his disciples' feet or his followers' feet was even more unexpected. But Jesus was demonstrating in this really lowly, simple act that he was a king unlike any other. He was a king, a servant king, a king willing to lead by example, are willing to put himself last and others first. And what he demonstrated here... Oh, oh, you've revealed that too early, Sam. Quick, take it away so nobody's seen it. Phew, darn. (laughs) He was a king (laughs) who demonstrated and introduced here what he went on to prove in the most exciting and amazing way. He served us, not just by getting his hands dirty, by touching someone's smelly feet, but he served us by laying down his life for us. And God's glory wasn't seen in Jesus the King with a golden crown or magnificent robes, but God's King, God's majesty, God's glory was seen in the humility of a courageous servant who washed his disciples' feet and loved them more than any one else. Now, 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 if we look back at our little footprints, ta-da, we might see something unexpected. That black dot wasn't black after all, but it contained in that ink a myriad of different colors. Hopefully, yours might have produced some of those colours. If not, you can see some of my demos later. What we see is that there's yellow, blue, and brown. Black wasn't really black after all. The people looked at Jesus and they expected to see one kind of king. But the reality of who he was was much more beautiful and much more amazing than they really understood. He's a king who rode into Jerusalem on a donkey on his final journey, hailed by the crowds as king. Crowds who expected something different and didn't comprehend. A king who isn't distant or removed, but made time to come close, so close that he washed his followers' feet. And a king who prepared for his death, not just by telling them what was going to happen, but by showing them through his actions and by giving us an example that we could follow. This king, humble, humble, courageous, obedient even to death, is the death who we come, this is the king who we come to remember this morning, but also the king that we come to celebrate now in communion. Yeah, and as we do, we're going to come um, and we're going to sing in preparation and then Stephen's going to lead us. So if you're able, if you're able to um, stand, we're going to sing um, the servant king. It's a 
It's quite an old song written by Graham Kendrick and a first line from Heaven You Came, Helpless Babe. So we're going to uh, come to now the point where we remember how Jesus served us by dying for us and rising again for us. So what I'd like you to do first of all is if perhaps you could look around the table and if there's somebody, obviously the youngest one at the table, and if there's not, decide amongst yourselves, but some one person from each table needs to go over to where Sarah's standing in the corner and uh, there they will be able to receive, I think Jill's going to help them do that, a plate of uh, a bread roll to bring back to your table so we can share in communion. If the youngest one doesn't want to go by themselves, perhaps an older one could go with them.
And then while you're doing that, the, uh, the people who are serving communion are going to start bringing uh, the glasses round to your table so that you'll have those ready as well. So each table in a moment should have uh, a glass for each person and uh, a, a bread roll on the table. And it was in this week, nearly 2,000 years ago, that Jesus first shared this meal with his disciples. And here we are all these years later still sharing in this meal. If we could have the uh, slides the first one. Can you have them on the screen? Is that possible? So I'll just say the words that are coming up on the screen together. And here's the first one. Jesus is our King. So we say that together? Jesus is our King. And the next line says, the kind of King that washes his disciples' feet. The kind of King that serves others. Jesus is our King. He says, come and share this meal with me. It's always worth remembering that each Sunday when you're invited to communion, it is King Jesus who has invited you to share in it. And the Bible says that Jesus took some bread when they were having their meal, and it says he broke it. And he broke it to remind them that his body was going to be broken for them. The king that's unexpected king is a king who loved us so much that he was prepared to give everything. Because the Bible says that after dinner, he also took a cup. And he said, this cup is a sign of the love I have for you. It's the new promise that you'll be with me. It was a cup that reminded us of his blood that was shed for us. Jesus the King gave everything for us. So what we'll do now is just at your table, Pass the, uh, the bread roll around one to another and just take a piece off it and perhaps you might pass it on to the next person and say, the king loves you and then pass it on to the next. Parents can decide if their children want to participate. And as we eat the bread, we can remember that Jesus the King had his body broken for us. And then what we can do as we're sitting around the tables, we can all take the glass and we're going to drink together because one of the things that Jesus did when he was broken, he brought us together. And here's a church family this morning. So... Together we're going to drink and say, we remember Jesus. So just say, we remember Jesus, and then all drink together. Remember Jesus. Jesus, thank you for being the kind of king who loved us enough and cares enough about us to die for us and to come back to life for us. We want to say this morning that we're thankful to you for what you have done for us. Help us to live lives that are thankful. 
Help us to be the kind of servant that you showed us how to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we're going to continue, and we're going to serve others this time by praying. And if someone could come up from each table and fetch this rather nice large piece of paper, the idea is, can you, thanks Jill. You can go to Jill and get a piece of paper, you're allowed, you're allowed to move. And the reason the piece of paper is quite big is that I want you to write down on the piece of paper in nice large bold letters things that you want to pray for. If you don't want to write, you can draw a picture. Hopefully you can gather around the piece of paper and put some things on it. So just for a few moments, a few minutes, write things. You can pray for big things in the world. You can pray for friends you know. Just put a name down. You can draw a picture. But let's see if we can create some prayer sheets as we do this. You can put lots of things on it. You've got one more minute to write down or draw a picture of things you want to pray for. And then here's the really exciting bit. When you finish doing that, even if you haven't finished doing that, someone from your table needs to bring it forward and hold it at the front so everyone can see. So nominate somebody from your table to bring it to the front. You know you want to, Richard. Set an example. Yeah, everyone else is coming. Some people are still doing their homework. And I'm going to bring the microphone and hopefully I won't get too far in front of the speakers. Pray for poverty. Pray for those in need. Pray for the whole world. Thank you. Peace in Gaza, thanks that the hostages have been freed in Nigeria. Peace for Ukraine, I suspect Ukraine may have appeared. The health of people in the royal family, yes, Princess of Wales and the King, both ill, aren't they? 
people who have had lost a loved one, people who have lost a loved one, and global warming. We've got some very specific things and some very big things. Peace, those affected by the shooting in Moscow. I forgot that there'd be some different ways up, didn't I? That's a lovely one. Wisdom, homes, peace, friends and family, health, work, generosity, and all in different colours. That's really good. Oh, and this one's good too. Family, you get awards for art. I didn't tell you that, did I? Family, health, anxiety, peace, homelessness, the vulnerable. And I think that's a dove of peace there, isn't it, on that one? Peace in the world, unity in the churches, pray for the homeless. Let's see, I think one or two more have appeared. Pray for the end to world hunger, pray for peace. And Sandra's mentioned there, and peace, and the new post on Graven Hill, and the royal family got a crown there for them. Thank you. Right, we're just going to hold them there, hold them up. I think people watching online can see, and they can join in our prayers. And can you see on the screen, there is a candle burning, and for... Thousands of years, a, a, a candle being lit has been a sign of prayer. Some people still go to churches where they light candles when they pray. So we're just going to look at the things on the paper, and uh, if you want to look at the screen, and we're going to pray a very simple prayer. Loving Father, King Jesus, thank you for the concerns you put on our hearts. We know they are on your heart too. We ask that you would hear our prayers this morning and answer them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as the people go back to the tables, what I'd like you to do is to collect a bunch of the palm uh, crosses that are here. So just take them back so you can distribute them to your table. They should be in bunches, so you can take them back to the table. And there'll be one more thing to do with our prayers when you get back to your tables. When you've got them at your tables and distributed them round, We're going to do one more thing in prayer. When we often, when we have communion, we have two people at the front and they're available to pray a prayer of blessing. This morning I thought we'd have a blessing that included everybody. So if you'd like, when you've got your palm cross, to hold it up and we'll say a prayer. Father, these palm crosses are a sign of blessing that we wish on each person sitting at the table with us. Would you bless them and encourage them in this coming week, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And you can take your palm cross home and remember to pray for others during this week. We started this morning by thinking about the kind of king or queen that you would want to be. And I wonder what you decided... Our Bible reading began, or ended rather, with an explanation that at first his disciples didn't understand. They didn't understand the kind of king that Jesus was going to be. It took them a while. They needed to, the insight of his death and his resurrection to understand the difference between their expectations and the reality, between their assumptions and what really happened. We have the benefit of knowing the fuller story, of knowing not just what Jesus taught, but what Jesus did when he died on the cross. We have the benefit of Holy, Holy Spirit with us to help us understand and to change our thinking. Like the people on the roadside, we might be waving our branches and not really understanding who Jesus is. But when we turn to him, when we listen to him, when we see who he really is, then hopefully we will respond as his disciples did by wanting to live like him, by wanting to follow his example. 
When Jesus washed his disciples' feet, he said, them, he said to them this, You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done. Jesus was a humble, a courageous, and a servant king who gave everything that we might know him. And he left his examples of what it looked like to follow him and to serve him as kings. The palm leaves that we started the service with are a sign of symbol and victory. And you've just been given a palm cross that is made out of those leaves. A symbol of victory, of triumph. Because although that cross that Jesus died on was meant to be a sign of defeat and failure, it was used by God to bring victory and triumph. And so I want to invite you to take your cross home with you today and to look at it as you journey through this Holy Week towards Easter Sunday next week. It's a sign of celebration. It's a sign of the kind of king that Jesus is. And I perhaps, as you look at it, it might remind you of his love for you. But perhaps it also might cause you to reflect on the kind of king that Jesus is to you. And there may be aspects of your life that you need to say sorry for. You need to lay down some of your expectations and your assumptions. Perhaps even you might want to spend some time asking God how it is that you can serve him as king. What it looks like for you to follow his example and to wash other people's feet. So as we go from here, as we finish our service together this morning, let's sing a final song. And that final song echoes that image of Jesus, a servant king how he calls us to also serve one another. So let's stand and sing if we're able. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Jesus to you. into the rest of this holy week. May Jesus, our King of Kings, make his rule known in your life. May you echo the crowds as Jesus entered Jerusalem, who praised and celebrated this King, even though they didn't yet know the nature and the scope of his saving plan. May the glory of our King give you strength and excite you with reasons to worship, 
even as we pray for his saving power over our world. May Jesus' humility, as he draws us near, heal us of our sin, give you hope that while we face this present storm and darkness, Jesus, the ultimate healer of our souls, will one day make all things new and right. And as you go from here, may you know the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Do stay for tea and coffee and eat the rest of your hot cross buns.